But as difficult as life may be in Joe Biden's America, you all possess a unique opportunity to take the first steps towards changing the direction of our country. Home to the first in the nation caucuses, Iowans enjoy a special privilege, but also a responsibility to examine and select the strongest candidate to defeat Joe Biden next November. It's clear that President Trump is, of course, that candidate, which is why it's critical that every America First Patriot participate in the Iowa caucus on Monday, January 15th at 7 p.m. and cast their vote for who else? Donald J. Trump. But for those who may never have participated in a caucus, you might wonder what it is and how you can participate in this incredible tradition. In short, the caucus is a meeting of fellow Republicans held in every voting precinct in Iowa. Friends, family, and neighbors gather in a central meeting location, usually a school, church, or community center, to cast their vote for President of the United States and, of course, to discuss the critical issues facing our nation, of which we know there are many. Thank you, Joe Biden. It's important to note that your caucus location may be different from where you previously voted in other elections, so be sure to look up your caucus site by visiting ia.donaldjtrump.com. On the evening of Monday, January 15th, President Trump's supporters should arrive at their caucus location early at around 6 p.m. When you arrive, don't panic. There may be long lines to register, but those lines are gonna move quickly, and once you're in line, you cannot be turned away. All Iowans who are 18 years or older by the date of the general election, which is November 5th, 2024, are eligible to participate in the Republican caucus. If you are a registered Republican, your name will already be on the precinct list. You simply need to show your photo ID to a volunteer. If you are not a registered Republican or are unsure of your registration status, you may register to vote as a Republican at your caucus location. If you choose to register at your caucus location, you must bring a valid photo ID, such as a driver's license, military ID, or student ID, and a piece of mail, such as a cell phone bill, utility bill, bank statement, or paycheck with your current home address for that voting precinct. After you check in or register to vote at your caucus location, volunteers will direct you to the room or area where your precinct caucus meeting will take place. Additionally, our campaign will have friendly representatives or Trump caucus captains at each location. They are going to be very recognizable because they will have a caucus captain hat and will be on hand to help direct or answer any questions that you may have. Once you gather with others from your precinct, a volunteer will call your caucus meeting to order promptly at 7 p.m. The meeting will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance and then caucus goers will elect a chairperson to officially run the remainder of the meeting. After a chairperson has been elected, this person will open the meeting to candidate speeches, and each candidate is allowed to be represented by one speaker. Speeches are usually limited to around three minutes each. After candidate speeches are finished, volunteers will distribute paper ballots to every voter in that precinct. You will have a moment to complete your ballot and will return it to a volunteer to be counted. What makes the Iowa caucus so special is that the paper ballots are collected and counted in front of all voters in your precinct, ensuring the process is secure and transparent. Not that we think that there was ever a time where voting was not secure and transparent. Wink, wink, nod, nod. After the votes are counted, the results will be announced to all caucus attendees, and that's it. Once caucus goers have cast their vote, they're free to leave, but for those wanting to take the extra step, step to support President Trump, we urge you to stay and run as delegate to your county Republican convention. We need each and every one of you to take just an hour of your night to support President Trump. Remember to mark your calendars for 7 p.m. on Monday, January 15th, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, because that's the day we're gonna start to take America back. The corrupt Washington establishment doesn't want our movement to succeed. President Trump has, of course, a tremendous lead in the polls, but we cannot leave anything to chance. Your participation in the Iowa caucus on January 15th will send a powerful message to the world that the America First movement is stronger and more united than ever. Together, we will win the Iowa caucus
and together we will make America great again. Please welcome to the stage State Senator Kevin Alons. Hello, everyone. Who's excited about Donald Trump? <laughs> well, it's great to be here in Sioux Center. I, this is where I'm from. I grew up uh, up in Boyden. I live down by Sioux City. I represent that area. But super excited to be up here and, and talking about Donald Trump. <clears throat> i got to give a quick confession. When I was been involved in the process for a while, I grew up, my dad was, uh, probably a lot of people up here know, he was involved in politics. And so I paid some attention. I was a county chair when... Donald Trump was a candidate, along with a whole bunch of other people. He wasn't my first choice. He was probably my last choice in 2015 when this started. And uh, watching him, he won the primary, and I supported him when he, when he won the election in 2016, and it didn't take long, and I was won over. He made some promises to us as a people, and he followed through on those promises. I mean, it's something that my dad was inspired by Ronald Reagan when he came back from the military, and that really got him involved in politics. And I, I really kind of have a similar situation where it just really motivated me to get involved, to see someone tell the truth, get it done. And uh, that was Donald Trump. So I'm just going to go through a couple things that he has done that uh, meant so much to me, you know, serving in the military and now um, serving in the Senate. First thing, national security, right? He talked about national security. And he said he was going to build a wall. He's going to defend our country. Boy, that is not happening today, is it? So he reversed policy. Think about the context. He reversed policy from a time of eight years of Obama, and uh, he went through just a host of things, border, tax reforms. And we are all still today um, taking advantage of those tax, advantage, tax reforms that he brought. He recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. That's something people have talked about for years. <laughs> Lip service. He did it. Unbelievable. And the thing that probably meant the most to me was that uh, we have been battling the pro-life Roe versus Wade ruling for now it was you know 50 years. Putting three Supreme Court justices that would actually adhere and follow the Constitution, unbelievable. Something and, and then to overturning Roe versus Wade, a bad decision, a bad judicial decision. That was an accomplishment that uh, I think he still doesn't get enough credit for. <laughs> and we owe him a debt of gratitude for that, but. Standing up to China, I just go down the list. The list goes on and on. But uh, Donald Trump is, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to stop. So I, I was at here in, uh, in Sioux Center a few weeks ago and listened to some of the other candidates. And they made the comment that, yeah, Donald Trump is the right man for the hour, talking about 2016. But, you know, there's just too much chaos, too much chaos. I'm like, and they, and they, they imply that the chaos is a Donald Trump thing. Where is that chaos coming from? It's coming from the media. It's coming from, it's coming from everywhere, frankly, and sometimes it comes from within the party. But Donald Trump was the man for the hour then. He is definitely the man of the hour today. He is the only person that is going to make... <laughs> Donald Trump is positioned to make America great again. So for me, as a, uh, as a Christian, I, I realize that, uh, or I really feel that the truth is the secret. We think back to, uh, we, we sometimes evaluate our candidates. Going back to what I said about not necessarily seeing Trump, maybe some of you were ahead of me before, right? But it took me a little bit to warm up to Trump. Because as a Christian, sometimes you use a criteria to select who is the best candidate. And that got us Jimmy Carter at one point. I don't know if anyone remembers that time period, but uh, I see how that went over. But uh, instead, we have a man who speaks the truth and seeks the truth and is willing to say the truth in public. And when he stood up to NATO, right, he told NATO that you got to pay your fair share. That wasn't a popular idea. European leaders mocked him for that. He said the truth. And that, I think, just spoke volumes to me as a member of the military especially. So we have to get every one of you from Iowa. Now, some, somebody implied that you don't have to be from Iowa to a caucus. That is not a true statement, right? You do have to actually be an Iowan. So... You can register that day as an Iowan, but uh, you have to go caucus, right? So everybody needs to go caucus, and you need to get your family and your friends, your church members, and everybody else to go caucus for Donald Trump, because what we need to do is send a resounding message that 
Trump is the he's going to be the nominee, but we need to send a message that just basically makes it game over and we can move on to defeating Joe Biden and restoring our country. <clears throat> So I'm just going to leave you with, I've, I've endorsed Donald Trump. I think he is absolutely, I know he's absolutely the man of the hour, and I, I know that you're behind him. I'm happy to see such an amazing turnout here in Sioux Center. And uh, go Donald Trump. Please welcome State Senator Jeff Taylor. Thank you. Welcome to Sioux Center, everyone. My name is Jeff Taylor, and I'm the state senator that represents Sioux County, Lyon County, and the northern half of Plymouth County. Donald Trump is probably the most unlikely president we've ever had. Think of the odds against him, and yet he won. Let's take a look at President Trump's record. Unlike the Bushes and the Clintons, Trump is not an elite-minded globalist indebted to our nation's largest transnational corporations. For him, America first is not just a slogan. It's been a consistent policy position for Trump since the 1980s. He's a sincere patriot. He earned the undying hostility of the power elite in Washington and New York City by denouncing the Iraq war when he first ran in 2016, trying to end the Afghanistan war, withdraw troops from Syria, and refusing to create a new Cold War against Russia. The military industrial complex and the intelligence agencies, the deep state in other words, and their political and media lackeys created the Russia collusion hoax because Trump was not sufficiently committed to endless wars and global empire. He's a nationalist. Yes. He worked to bring about more peaceful relations with North Korea. He rarely gets credit for it. And he was hampered by institutional constraints and pressures. But Donald Trump was a peacemaker as president. And I think he will be blessed by God for being one. Coming out of his nationalism, he tried as best he could to bring about a secure southern border. He was thwarted at almost every turn by the Paul Ryans and the Mitch McConnells in Congress, yeah, boo, who wanted to exploit cheap labor on behalf of big business. But he tried. He successfully stopped TPP. He killed NAFTA. He stood up for American working class in a way that wasn't just rhetorical. He actually did things to bring manufacturing jobs back to our nation, including our largest cities. This was also part of his populism, a mindset that transcends party, ideology, and racial lines. The best kind of populism unites people. Trump made some strides, attracting more African American and Hispanic support than establishment candidates like McCain and Romney. Polls show even greater support in, 19, in 2024. Donald Trump proved to be a champion of the pro-life cause, as Senator Alonz mentioned. He was the first president to ever speak in person at the March for Life. He appointed three excellent Supreme Court justices. In terms of human instrumentality, we have Trump to thank for the court's 2022 ruling that Roe v. Wade was wrongly decided and needed to be reversed. Now I say human instrumentality because obviously we need to thank God for that. It was, uh, I, I, I had been working for it myself in my own little way for decades. I, I was shocked that it happened and it happened so quickly. Thank God for that. <laughs> Finally, after nearly 50 years, state legislatures can decide for themselves rather than be dictated to by unelected federal judges. That's been our goal in the pro-life movement for nearly 50 years. He did all of these things and much more in the face of unprecedented and unrelenting hostility, hysteria, hypocrisy, and dishonesty by almost every center of power and privilege in America. It's not misspelled tweets or boorish behavior or make-believe loyalty to Putin that offends them. They hate him because his love of country threatens the convenient status quo of control and plunder that they had built on a global scale for many decades prior to 2016. He came in and he upset the apple cart and they'll never forgive him for that. <laughs> he, 
Hence the collusion hoax, hence the impeachments, hence the indictments, hence the efforts to remove him from the ballot. All unprecedented, all unprecedented. They also hate him because he represents an older American tradition before wokeness became the new normal. He doesn't go along with political correctness, identity politics, gender craziness, and suppression of free speech. On a personal level, Donald Trump is a flawed human being. So am I, and so are you. All of us have sinned. All of us fall short of the glory of God. But overall, Donald Trump did an excellent job as President of the United States, and he deserves a chance to extend that legacy. Of all the candidates running for the Republican nomination, only Trump has actually delivered. He's the only candidate who has run for the White House and been elected. <laughs> Trump had so much populist appeal that he carried states in 2016 that no Republican nominee had carried in decades. Wisconsin, not since 1984. Michigan and Pennsylvania, not since 1988. Current polls show him just as strong or stronger in these swing states. McCain and Romney lost Iowa. Trump won Iowa two times. And as I finish up, I just want to point out that in 2016, Trump carried 31 of the counties in Iowa that Obama carried twice, 31. These were mostly working class areas in eastern Iowa that had long-standing labor union and Democratic Party ties. For instance, in Dubuque County, it hadn't voted Republican for president since 1956 with Eisenhower. In 2020, Trump carried all 31 counties a second time and increased his margin of victory in 27 of the 31. Donald Trump is the best chance we have of retaking the White House. He's also the only candidate running with a proven track record of not just promising, but delivering peace and prosperity. Turn out with your friends and neighbors and family on January 15th, and let's repeat another Trump victory in Iowa. Thank you. I hope everybody is listening because we have some very important information for you to make sure we win this primary and we win it big. It all starts right here in Iowa with the first in the nation caucuses that I was able to give to Iowa. I controlled it and I gave it, just as I said I would. The outcome in this state will send a message to the entire country and, in fact, the entire world. So please listen very carefully to these simple steps you need to take to vote in the Iowa caucuses on Monday, January 15th, 2024. That's Martin Luther King Day, January 15th, 2024. Together, we're going to make history, but you have to show up and you have to follow these instructions. Thank you all, and let's go and make America great again. We're going to do it. We're going to make it greater than ever before. Making America great again starts one place on Earth and one place only, right here in Iowa. Monday, January 15th, 7 p.m. Be there, because it's caucus night. Now, you may say to yourself, self, I've never been to a caucus. How does it work? You've come to the right place. Because for the next two minutes, Marlin's going to tell you everything you need to know about how to successfully caucus for President Trump. Caucusing is super easy. Before we get going, let's make sure you are eligible to caucus. Time to check with the lawyers. For that, here's Margot from the law firm of Dewey, Dewey & Chittister. To vote at a caucus, you must be at least 18 years old. But here's the kicker. That's 18 by November 5th of 2024, Election Day. Okay, so now you know you're eligible to vote in the Iowa caucus. Woohoo! How simple is it to caucus? As simple as this. Wait, that's, that's the wrong one. As simple as this. Three easy steps. Step one, make sure you're eligible. Done. Okay, step two, do you know where your caucus location is? Now be careful, the correct answer isn't necessarily your regular voting location. I'm throwing you a lifeline here. You can easily find your caucus location and lots of other information by going to ia.donaldjtrump.com. Now, a quick time management lesson. It's Monday, January 15, caucus day. 
You wake up at 5 a.m. because you are so excited to caucus for President Trump. So what time should you get to your caucus location? Aren't you the go-getter? You don't need to be to your caucus location until 6 p.m., so no excuses for being late. And finally, step three, register once you get to your caucus. Now, if the line is long, don't panic. I said don't panic. Sorry. The lines move very quickly, and once you're in line, you can't be turned away, so hang in there. Okay, starting exactly at 7 p.m., it's time for democracy to begin. First, you will hear a few brief speeches. Then paper ballots for voting will be distributed, collected, and counted, all in front of you. Easy peasy. And that's the first step to making President Trump our next president and making America great again. I win.